All right, well, thank you. That was really interesting. Uh, I'm Adam Guess. I'm one of the uh, Cornea Fellows. I'll just, pre, uh, I'll just be presenting briefly the patient that we, uh, hopefully most of us had a chance to see upstairs. This will just be a, a brief presentation about that patient. Um, hopefully we can get some input from the audience about this patient. Uh, so I'll just be presenting the, uh, the patient that we saw upstairs, uh, one of our cornea patients, and uh, hopefully we can get some input from the audience about uh, management on this patient. Uh, our patient is a 22-year-old woman with a uh, his she was referred to Dr. Mifflin. She has a history of uh, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, type 6, which was diagnosed at birth. Um, eight months ago, this patient uh, sustained injury to her right eye um, after uh, having a syncopal episode. Uh, she was at a restaurant passed out and hit her eye on the edge of one of the booths. Uh, she sustained a ruptured uh, globe at that time and uh, she had surgical repair about a day and a half later. Um, the repair was described as difficult by the surgeon, both due to, <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, due to the thin uh, superior sclera. Uh, she also was noted to have posterior pressure from choroidals at that time. Uh, so at this time, eight months later, uh, she has an uncorrected visual acuity of uh, 2500. Uh, she pinholes to 2080. And that's, uh, she sees 2300 with a minus 10 uh, spherical correction. Uh, her pressure is normal. Her pupil is superiorly uh, decentered, as you see, uh, but it was reactive with no APD. Uh, the AC was deep and quiet. Her lens is clear and, and centered, and she does have this large uh, superior staphyloma uh, with scleral thinning and underlying uveal prolapse. Uh, her retinal exam was uh, within normal limits except for the superior uh, uveal prolapse. I'll show you a few more images here. Here's another image uh, demonstrating the thin uh, superior sclera, and a slit image here demonstrating just how, how thin this tissue is. Uh, Penicam imaging was done and showed uh, a thin uh, corneal thickness centrally, and, and uh, you see 431 there just inferior to central. And uh, also you'll note that she has 12 diopters of, uh, with the rule corneal astigmatism. And s you see on the tangential curvature there that she's very uh, steep superiorly. Uh, so a very um, abnormally shaped cornea, which is contributing to her poor vision. So uh, in summary, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about what could be done uh, uh, surgically for this patient. Uh, before we do that, I'll just present uh, a few slides about this condition, Ehlers-Danlos type 6. Uh, the type that she has is called the kyphoscoliotic uh, type. And in fact, this patient did have scoliosis. She's had four back surgeries uh, to repair that. Some of the features that are common, uh, it's an autosomal recessive uh, condition. Uh, the, the bluish sclera due to scleral thinning. Uh, limbus to limbus corneal thinning is almost universal. Uh, ocular fragility, which I'll uh, go into more depth on, is, is very common. And patients also often have hypermobile joints and, the, uh, and hearing loss is another common uh, feature. The uh, deficit in this condition is thought to be lysyl hydroxylate, although it seems that other collagen uh, defects may also uh, cause this condition. Uh, in two different studies by Cameron and Biglon, uh, most of the patients in these studies, there was about 10 patients in one and 12 in the other study, uh, experienced globe ruptures, 63 to 70 percent by the age of 18, which to me was a staggering uh, number. And the mean age of the first globe rupture in these patients was 5.2 years of age. Uh, many of the patients they described had very minimal trauma, you know, a small twig hitting the eye or rubbing the eye lightly. Uh, and usually it was corneal rupture that occurred. Uh, the surgical repair in these patients was described as difficult, as you might imagine. Uh, there was a lot of cheese wiring of sutures. Uh, ocular contour abnormalities are universal in these patients. Keratoglobus is common, uh, peripheral scleral cornea. Uh, keratometry values can range from under 40 to over 60, and changes of anywhere from three to six diopters in a single year have been described, so they're, um, the, the corneas can change quite quickly also. Here's a, a list of some of the pathologic changes that occur. Uh, this image was from the Cameron paper, and uh, it was a patient who had had uh, a limbus to limbus epikeratoplasty, uh, which was followed by a penetrating keratoplasty. So you see on top there the epikeratoplasty, and then below the, the second asterisk is the, uh, the patient's cornea. So you see how very thin that is. And you can see some of the other abnormal changes that can occur absent Bowman's layer, stromal thinning, disorganized stromal lamellae, or uh, decimase membrane um, abnormalities. The best treatment for these patients is prevention, the protective glasses, just because corneal rupture or scleral rupture is so common. Uh, and as I mentioned, unfortunately, uh, patients have been described to have globe rupture without any trauma at all, even with protective lenses in place. So it's a very uh, difficult uh, situation. Uh, as I mentioned, limbus to limbus epikeratoplasty has been described for providing uh, tectonic support, uh, for flattening the cornea, for reducing irregular astigmatism. 
so uh, for our patient, we wanted to uh, get some input from the audience about uh, treatment options. Um, one would perhaps be a contact lens. This patient hasn't had contact lens fitting. She was wearing contact lenses uh, prior to this, but they don't fit currently on her right eye. Um, should we consider surgical repair, perhaps a scleral patch graft? Uh, should we consider repairing the iris, maybe a purse string type suture uh, repair to the iris? And the other thing we talked about, would collagen cross-linking have any role? You know, lysyl hydroxylase is actually an enzyme that cross-links collagen, and that's what is thought to be uh, missing in these patients. So um, I'd like to sort of open it up to getting some input from the audience as to what we should be thinking about with this patient. Dr. Olson. Oh yeah, so her other eye is, is normal, it sees well. She was uh, 20, 25 with her contact on.
interesting. Yeah. Hmm. That's super interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other comments? Okay. Yeah. Question over here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.